How do I help people with post-traumatic stress disorder? I'll tell you in a moment. I'm making this video in response to a post that was on the Advanced Hypnosis Skills Facebook group. Uh, if you want to join the group, link is down below in the description. The question was specifically about how, as a hypnotist, I deal with people who have post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD. So I want to describe the general process that I use and I want to describe why it works. With most post-traumatic stress disorders, I will use a variation of the symbology process. If you're not familiar with the symbology process, you can find some links on it on YouTube. I have an incredibly good product on my website that was made by my mentor, Jeffrey Stevens, that describes the process. Uh, but I'll give you a very, a very brief description of it as we go through here. Uh, the process I will describe in a moment, but mostly I want to talk about PTSD and anxiety and how and why it is so difficult for people to deal with it in their everyday life. Post-traumatic stress, as you probably know, is the result of trauma. It is sometimes a one-time traumatic event, sometimes it's a series of traumatic events. The emotional response from this is, is that the anxiety, the reliving of the entire trauma can come up spontaneously, sometimes on its own, sometimes to very specific events, but the person experiencing it feels completely out of control. They know they should not be responding in this way and they cannot help it. Now, with that in mind, need to understand that dealing with it at a conscious level, intentionally trying to talk themselves into calming down, is really almost impossible. They have already tried to talk themselves into calmness, but the trauma and has impacted them on such a deep level, all of it happens spontaneously, it happens subconsciously. It makes it very difficult to detach from the emotion. Now, fortunately, the symbology process helps to create detachment very effectively and use it to help make change. To begin with, prior to the hypnosis session, during what some people would consider the pre-talk, I ask the hypnosis subject to first of all, describe to me the anxiety, how it feels, when it happens, what your thoughts are like, what your physical sensations are like. I want them to describe it to me in as much detail that I can imagine it myself experiencing it. Now doing this helps me first of all understand what they're going through, but it also begins the process of allowing them to talk about the trauma with some detachment, with some more distance. That's just the first step. Once I understand the trauma for them, I ask them what they would rather be feeling. It is not enough for them to simply say, I don't want to feel anxious because that does not describe what they want. It describes what they don't want. So I will continue to pry at them and poke them until they tell me what they want. This is going to be a positive resource state. Now this could be I want to feel peace of mind. It could be, I want to feel a sense of joy. I want to feel love and acceptance. I want to feel confidence. Whatever it is they give me, this is going to become the resource state that I will use during the symbology process to replace the anxiety response. Usually, in fact, I am going to test them in this conversation. I'll ask them to suppose that they are currently and already feeling this very positive resource state and it's getting better and better and better and they're feeling this state grow stronger and stronger if you're feeling this state right now growing stronger could you bring up that anxiety and if they say no i couldn't then we've 
found out what we need to know, it has passed the test. If they are still able to say they would feel the anxiety, it's usually because of one of two things. We first may not have the right resource state. That's a possibility. More often than not, what's really taking place is they just haven't really stepped into imagining feeling this resource state. So I will press them a little bit further. I will say, let's be very clear. I want you to imagine you are feeling this resource state. You're feeling it now and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. You're feeling better and better. Could you, could you even have the anxiety if you felt this state? And that is when they would usually say, no, I couldn't. And I, I congratulate them and say, good, they're doing a great job. You've passed the test. This is what we're going to do. Okay, I have now what I need to do the symbology process. I have the problem state, the anxiety, the trauma. I have the resource state. That is when we will go right into the hypnosis process. Now, I'm not going to describe the whole hypnosis process here. You can learn about it by downloading or ordering the course that's on my website. That's all available. Links down below. We go through the induction, the deepener, the complex deepener, the boilerplate, and then we go to the symbology process. The symbology process works like this. I tell them to ask their subconscious mind to give them a symbol that represents every part of this trauma. And again, they're not making up up in their own conscious mind. They're asking their subconscious mind to give them a symbol for the trauma. Once they say they have a symbol by I say, nod your head when you have it. Then I ask them to examine it, look at it, become aware of it, see every detail of it, the colors, the lines, the angles, see it from every angle, notice the colors, the textures, notice the light and the shadows. And when they really know this symbol, nod their head. Now keep in mind what's happening here is by first making it a symbol instead of an experience, they're detaching from it. By further examining the details of it, they are even further detaching from it. They're becoming aware of it, but not involved in it. Now, once they are clear on this is the symbol for their trauma, I go to the next step. The next step is to ask their subconscious mind, again, not their conscious mind, but their subconscious mind, to make any change to this symbol so it represents the feeling of the resource state, the peace of mind, the confidence, the joy, the acceptance, whatever it is they gave me. And once their subconscious mind has made any change to this symbol, so it represents the feeling of the resource state, I'll ask a second time. I say, good. Now ask your subconscious mind if there's anything more that can be added or improved or changed to make this the most positive expression of that amazing feeling. And whatever additional change your subconscious mind tells you to make, make that change. And when you know that this is the symbol for that incredible, wonderful feeling, nod your head. Once we have it, we go a step further. Now let's keep in mind, we have now the symbol for the resource state. It is also detached. They're not feeling it. It's just the symbol. So the instructions that follow, are that this symbol represents a feeling and every feeling belongs inside the body. So take this symbol and bring it right into your body, right where you know it needs to go. When you've got it there, nod your head. So they nod their head. Then I have them fill their body with it, head to toe, fingertip to fingertip, fill every part of them with this incredible and wonderful feeling. When you've done that, nod your head. They nod their head. They feel really good. I say, turn it up even more, start to radiate it and make it now so intensely radiant 
that you're a beacon of this incredible feeling and anyone around you can feel this incredible positive feeling growing stronger and stronger. When you've done that, nod your head. So they nod their head. Okay, they are now associated. They are feeling the resource state. It is real for them. I then have them imagine going through their day in every detail, feeling this resource state, growing stronger and stronger, feeling better and better through every moment, through every interaction, through every time when in the past they remember how they used to feel a trauma, but now they're feeling this resource state and go through every moment of it. Every moment of the day feeling this incredible resource state. When they've gone through the day feeling this resource state, I tell them, ask them to nod their head. They take their time and they nod their head. Go through another day. Feel even better. When you're done, nod your head and they go through another day. I have them start running days through their mind, one day right after another, and every moment they are feeling this incredible resource state growing stronger and stronger. That is really the essence of the symbology process. And for a lot of people, that will be enough. However, I don't stop there. I, from that point, I go through the magic uh, or the golden box process that's described in the hypnosis uh, process where I have them leave their conscious mind entirely. I speak directly to the subconscious mind and I tell the subconscious mind, you know, what you're supposed to say, which is you did all this work creating this trauma. You had reasons for doing it, but now you know it is this incredible feeling that is what is best for, for Joe or Josephine, whatever the name is. And go through that entire process just as though it were the rest and the remainder of the, um, the Jeffrey Stevens hypnosis process. And then I wake them up after doing the, uh, the magic mirror, you know, ego building, ego, strength, ego strengthening, and I test it. At the end, I test it. I always test it. Some hypnotists are afraid of testing the results. I insist on doing it. Once their eyes are open, sometimes the little tears coming out of their eye, they feel so good. Sometimes they open their eyes and they go, wow, that was great. But I test it. I ask them, notice what happens now when you try to bring up that trauma. And I'll shut up, I'll look at them, and I'll have them do it. And it's very interesting because you see them trying. You see them trying to bring up the trauma. They'll even have the memories of the trauma but the feeling isn't there anymore. And it's pretty dramatic. And I, uh, if you wanna know more about the details of it, uh, I use this in most of the hypnosis processes I use. This works incredibly well for anxiety and post-traumatic stress. The full description of the entire hypnosis processes that I use are in a course, the advanced hypnosis skills course. Uh, I'll provide a link down below. And uh, if you have questions about this, let me know. If you need help working with anxiety, I can say that there was a time when people coming to me with anxiety, I felt very uncertain about. I didn't really know how to deal with it as a hypnotist. This works really, really well. So if you need any feedback on how to do this or any sort of coaching, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to share this with you. If you have questions, please put them in the comments below. Like, share, you know, smash that subscribe button, all that, those things that people say. I hope this has been of help. If you have questions, please get in touch with me, leave a comment. I will respond. Please take care. Bye.